Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So I finally got to see X-Men Days of Future Past, so I wanted to do a review of the movie, and because it changes the X-Men universe in such an interesting way, I'm gonna do a breakdown of the new timeline as well as the post credit scene. That's right, if you go see the movie, remember to stay through all the credits. If you're finding me for the first time, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more big movie reviews just because so many big things are coming this summer, like Guardians of the Galaxy, Planet of the Apes, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Be sure to subscribe to get everything, and if there's a movie that you really want me to do a video for, just let me know in the comments. So because most of you probably have not seen the movie yet, I'm gonna start with a non-spoilery review, and then I'll go into spoilers where I talk about my top five moments, as well as the post credit scene in the new timeline. So don't worry, there will be a warning for spoilers. So right off the bat, I really love the movie. It's a very different type of superhero movie from Winter Soldier, which came just a little while ago. I thought of it as being like a revisionist history, political thriller that also had superheroes in it. Like they could have made this movie without any superheroes or time travel, and it still would have been a really interesting story, which is one of the reasons why I think that they asked Bryant Singer to return to direct the movie because he does thrillers really well and he does ensemble films really well. And there are a ton of characters in this movie. One of the most notable differences between this movie and say the Marvel films is that the cast is so much bigger, at least the main cast. They have so many characters, it takes a lot of work just to make sure you don't forget what the actual story is. And Bryan Singer did a really good job of maintaining the through line of the X-Men trying to change the past, you know, the essential the A story. So I really like the way they shot the movie. They made it look very, very different in the future than they did in the past. So it typically looks like a normal film in the future, you know, digital cameras, special effects, but whenever they go into the past, they use this awesome real old newsreel footage look. So it looks like you're actually watching films that were filmed in the 70s. Even though it didn't lean too hard on, you know, big special effects, there were some really big action set pieces that were really cool. They spoiled most of them in the trailers like you would expect, so there weren't a lot of surprises. I did like that they didn't go crazy with explaining all the new characters' powers like Quicksilver. But let's talk about the characters for a second because that's actually where the movie really, really shines. Yes, it was fun seeing the original X-Men on screen with the first class versions, and Patrick Stewart totally gets his awesome Professor X speechifying moments, but my favorite performances were from Evan Peters as Quicksilver and Hugh Jackman. Really though, Evan Peters was definitely the most fun person to watch. After this movie, though, it feels like the most visible actors in the franchise are gonna be Jennifer Lawrence and Hugh Jackman. Combine them together and you basically have what Robert Downey Jr. is for Marvel. You know, this big giant face that they can market to everyone. Hugh Jackman was originally gonna retire from the role of Wolverine after this movie, but He's totally backtracked since then, and he's planning on doing another Wolverine spinoff, which is probably gonna be like an Old Man Logan film, and the next X-Men sequel, which is gonna be X-Men Apocalypse. So he's gonna continue to be the face of the X-Men franchise for a long time. But now it's time to talk about my top five favorite moments. So there will be spoilers, so careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet, but here we go. Number five, the new post-apocalyptic future. It's always fun to see the end point, you know, like skipping ahead to the last page in a book. If you watch the 90s X-Men cartoon, they did an X-Men Age of Apocalypse storyline with some of the new characters that we see in the movie, like Bishop, for instance. Days of Future Past is a whole different storyline from the comics from the Age of Apocalypse, but visually, the world of the future looks very similar. Everything just ends up in a pile of rubble and bodies. It was a lot of fun to see all the future tech too. I kind of wonder what was powering the new Quinjet, like a small fusion reactor or something like that. The Sentinels were really cool too. If you didn't catch it, they were mimicking Mystique's powers to adapt to different mutants' powers. That's why they could use fire against Bobby or ice against Sunspot. A lot of the Sentinels did kill people with, you know, regular physical attacks, but I feel like the most popular kill shot was Cyclops' eye beam. Number four, the world of the 70s. One of my favorite things about the movie was just the way they made everything look, the visual style. Like everyone had Wolverine sideburns. You know, totally kidding, but if you've heard stories about how New York City turned into a dump during the 70s and 80s. That's kind of what I thought when they showed the X-Men in the past for the first time. It's like after the 60s in that first class movie, the Vietnam War happened and everything just went to hell. All the main characters are just in awful places psychologically. Mystique has become this disillusioned, angry person and it seems like everyone just hates themselves. That's why the biggest chunk of the movie is that call to action. All those characters digging themselves out of their own graves. Number three, old Logan in the 70s. So if it wasn't clear, when he goes back in time, his body has not been infused with adamantium yet, and he hasn't met Stryker, which is why he freaks out whenever he sees young Stryker for the first time. Hugh Jackman really became the face of this movie, even if the plot revolves around Jennifer Lawrence, but I feel like they weaved him in in just kind of a funny way, 
as if he's forgotten how awful the 70s are in that whole time. Remember, he's been alive longer than any other X-Man. They did add just the right amount of Logan jokes, you know, using his healing factor for comedy and him just putting up with dumb shit from the 70s. Of all the characters, he really is one of the few who can say they've heard every single joke that's ever been told and seen everything there is to see. So logically, he should be the least surprised by everything. I love that the character is such a loner, but they give him the burden of doing this call to action, you know, bringing all these characters together, even though Patrick Stewart does give him a little bit of help. And the great thing is, is that as much as they change the timeline at the end of the movie, it's still the same old Logan, grumpy old Logan. I would not have him any other way. Number two, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique. There's a whole lot going on with Jennifer Lawrence in the X-Men movies and in real life right now. She's just blowing up. As older cast members start to get older, she's probably going to become the face of the franchise, like the megastar that they use to market it. So as long as she keeps doing X-Men movies, she'll continue to be one of the central characters in the plot, that is. The good thing about this is not only is Jennifer Lawrence a really amazing actress, she's also this loner character, Mystique, just like Logan. So she can always align herself with new villains that come along, like the new villain in Age of Apocalypse. I'll talk about that more in a second, but Overall, I think she had a stronger performance in the movie than James McAvoy or Michael Fassbender. Really, a lot of those other characters took a back seat to her and Logan in this movie, and I thought it totally worked. And my number one moment, the new changed timeline. So many things to say about this. What happened is, is they basically negated the events of Wolverine Origins and X3, that Brett Ratner movie, which I'm so happy about. They didn't throw away any of Brian Singer's X-Men movies, the first two, so everyone is back, but I think all the future sequels will mostly just be the new first class cast members, you know, Jennifer Lawrence, Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy. The interesting thing about changing the past though is that a lot of things still probably played out the same way, but I think future sequels will address those gaps in time. But now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments below. What was your favorite moment? You know, was it one of the big action set pieces or was it some of the new characters? I know I didn't really talk about the big action set piece, you know, the Magneto one, but as cool as it was, they basically spoiled it in the trailer, so it wasn't really a WTF surprise moment. post credit scene time. As I expected, it was all about teasing the next X-Men sequel, X-Men Apocalypse. That's coming in a couple years, probably 2017, maybe late 2016, depends on whenever they get started. Even though the main villain is obviously going to be Apocalypse, we could see Mr. Sinister or a lot of other evil mutants they could always bring along. If you want to learn a lot more about Apocalypse, I'm obviously going to be doing more bonus videos about him, but you should also watch the cartoon series from the 90s that's on Netflix and read the Age of Apocalypse comic book. Essentially, he's been living in the X-Men world for thousands of years, so presumably the movie, the X-Men movie, will explain why we haven't seen him in any of the movies yet. Just because he's so powerful, you know, why wouldn't he be around? I totally love that they showed him building the Great Pyramids, what did I say about X-Men being revisionist history films? If it wasn't clear, the scene was in ancient Egypt. I think the pyramid he was building was the Great Pyramid of Giza, which was constructed about 2560 BC. So that gives you an idea for how old he is. I think essentially he was born around 3000 BC. So he's basically immortal, much more so than Wolverine. Wolverine isn't really immortal. He just heals himself constantly. So he just ages very, very slowly. So I will be talking about Apocalypse in a bunch more bonus videos in the future. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. There's also a couple more bonus videos I'm working on this weekend. There's no Game of Thrones, but I will have a bonus video and there's some cool Doctor Who stuff happening. Also, thank you so much for your patience. I'm traveling right now, so I have like really awful Wi-Fi in my old crummy laptop, so everything is just really, really slow. So right now, click here to get my breakdown of the Gardens of the Galaxy trailer and click here to learn all about Arrow Season 3 and the new Flash TV show. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.